Hello everyone, welcome to part three, I guess it is, for the Psychotic Break Build Log video series where I am showing you the whole process of building my new three pound combat robot, Psychotic Break. In this video, I'm gonna talk all about the weapon hub and how I plan on transferring power from the motor to the whole weapon assembly up front and what that assembly might look like. So let's dive in and see all the pieces to the central weapon assembly. So first off, I don't really want to start modifying this weapon yet because it is hardened S7 and that's going to be a bit of a trick. So what I did yesterday is I used the good old laser cutter and laser cut a quarter inch piece and uh, made a little substitute weapon and this does have the bore out of the middle so now I can kind of use this as a substitute and I don't really have to mess with the weapon bar. And in front of me I have all these um, 3D printed components that will comprise the central hub so I'm going to bring the camera over here and I'll show you how all this fits together. Okay, so here are many of the components that will go into the front assembly. Um, this is a half inch piece of steel. This is just kind of um, a stand in right now for the weapon shaft. I'm probably gonna do titanium, maybe with an aluminum sleeve in the middle, who knows? Um, but this just kind of gives me a rough idea of the diameter that I will be dealing with. So that's all that that is for. Here is the motor I'm gonna use, the 3D printed pieces and some stuff over here. For these 3D printed parts, these are just PLA right now. I just kind of um, printed these out just to test the fit and the form and function of everything. But eventually I'm gonna have these printed at Shapeways on one of their HP Polyjet machines. I've used that before. These are the little um, drive pulleys that were on Anxiety Attack and it's a really interesting material. It's basically a sintered nylon. So it's kind of like the Nylon G or Nylon X stuff, but it's um, sintered and has really good low level detail. Um, you can see that this is a um, round belt pulley and it has a lot of really good detail. So I'm probably gonna end up using that. And because it's nylon, it's also quite strong. For some of this, I might end up just printing it here with my own printer, but anyway. Um, so yeah, let's kind of um, get a look at how all this goes together. Uh, you basically have a stack up. I figured out that um, the distance of my shaft needs to be about one inch or 1.25 inches. And I'm gonna get into that later, but 1.25 is roughly the um, length that I'm looking at for the weapon shaft. So, you know, something like that. So that means in the 1.25 inches, I need to both handle the radial loads and the axial loads and able to transfer power to the weapon itself. So what I've come up with is I have three pieces here which might get consolidated down into uh, two. We've got the weapon, which is about a quarter inch, and each one of these is about a quarter inch. So we have about one inch, and then we also have these um, thrust washers. These are bronze oilite bearings, and these are 16th of an inch. That will fill up the rest of that 1.125 uh, inches. So let me just uh, stack this together and show you how it all fits together. This whole design is invertible, so there's really no top and bottom, um, but I'm just gonna call this the bottom piece. This is the bottom plate, and you see it has these threaded inserts. These are heat inserts, so you just kind of press these in with a soldering iron. This is um, essentially the same thing I did with Anxiety Attack. They're just these little kind of um, ribbed or barbed guys that you melt into your hole and it ends up looking like that, which is pretty cool. And I also have one of these oil light bearings pressed in to a little um, recess. This is a 16th of an inch thick, so 0.0625, and this recess is about 0.05, so it sits proud or sits a little high of that. So when I set it down, you can see it rocks back and forth a little bit and that is so that it can properly come into contact with another one of these bronze washers. So this sits on the bottom. Um, I have one of these needle bearings. This is 0.75 by 0.75 and with a half inch inner diameter. So that sets inside a little recess. I got this really tight. I might need to press this in. So there we go. So that sets inside. It sets inside an eighth of an inch, so half that dimension because this is 0.75, this whole stack is one inch, there's gonna be an eighth of an inch lip on either side. So this sits in there, this weapon will sit here, 
And now I have this spacer piece. The original idea was that you could use the spacer here or you could take it out and use it here so that you could have two different weapon heights. But because this whole design is invertible, I'm just gonna use the invertible aspect of it and actually combine these into a single piece instead. But I wanted to try out the um, spacer concept first. So this goes in here, line up the holes. Then we put in this little spacer piece like that. And now we have about an eighth of an inch sticking up on the top, which fits perfectly into the recess for our pulley. The pulley is very similar to the bottom piece. It still has the recess for the bronze bushing. And then I also have little recesses for these button head cap screws so it sits nice and flush on the top. These screws are a little bit long. It's the only thing I could find locally. Um, they should be seven eighths of an inch, but they're one inch, so they're a little bit long, but I'll get some new ones. And yeah, then I have a little um, profile for the pulley sitting right on there. I'm testing out different pulley options or different belt options, so this is just kind of a test for right now, but anyway, that's where the pulley attaches. So this just kind of lines up like that, and then the whole stack just gets assembled through. So I'm going to do this off camera because it's kind of difficult to line this up and let me get this all put together. So here is the whole assembly put together. Um, you can see the pulley groove is actually there so the belt would fit around like that and then you have the spacer weapon and then the final bottom piece. And like I said, I'm probably gonna make these two all one piece just because, you know, it doesn't really matter. If I run like that, it's down that low. If I flip it upside down, it's a little higher. So I'll just use the invertibility instead of adjusting the weapon every time. So we have the um, needle bearing that goes on the inside. So there you go. I guess maybe like that is a little bit better. So it spins around the needle bearing on the inside, and so that supports the radial load. The radial load is coming in from this direction. So when I'm getting hit like this, that is the radial load being taken up by the needle bearing on the inside. The axial load is this way or up and down. The axial load is being taken up by these thrust washers. One will go like that and one will go like that and so the whole assembly gets clamped that way and rides along those nice little oil light bearings. So that is kind of how this whole assembly is going to work. This shaft will be cut down to one and one eighth inches long. Each end, end will be drilled and tapped and so the top and bottom pieces will go like that and like that and then the screw will come through and that will hold the whole assembly together. There will be a little bit of a shoulder in the top and bottom plate so that I'm not relying completely on shear of the screws. I'll get into that later when I'm actually closer to doing the frame. But yeah, this is just kind of a rough idea of how this is all going to go together. So how did I decide that the shaft or this distance needs to be one and an eighth or yeah, I could probably even do one and a quarter inch? Well, let's look at the overall robot itself. So I always like to start with the wheels. If I'm gonna do an invertible design, that means the wheel stands up like that and from the floor to the top of the wheel, that's the diameter of the wheel. This is a one and seventh eighth seven eighth inch wheel, so 1.1875 or 1.875 inches tall. This is a Fingertech little foam wheel. This is 1.75 inches. In the Fingertech, they also make this in a two and a 2.25, and then the finger or the um, Bainbots goes into a two and seven eighths, I think, so it has a little bit bigger wheel. So that is the wheels that I have at my disposal. I can go anything from a 1.75 up to like a two and seven eighths. So what is my vertical height here? So I have the wheel standing up like that. I'm gonna first want some ground clearance. So let's call it a quarter inch for ground clearance. And then the quarter inch on the other side. So that's a half an inch, okay? Then I have the frame pieces. We have these two frame pieces. I have one top, one bottom. Each one of these is gonna be a quarter inch as well. So that's another half an inch because it's two of those. So now I have an inch of this wheel totally taken up. If this is a one and seventh inch wheel, I am only left with 
seven eighths or 0.875 inches left. So with this stack up, if I have 0.875, and I have 0.2 in the weapon, that means this, this, and this need to only be 0.6. So then it'd be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and I could not really allow any extra room for the thrust bearings. So I decided to not do that wheel and move up to the larger two inch. That gives me an extra eighth of an inch, but what I wanna do is do the 2.25 or two and a quarter inch wheel, which gives me about a little over than a quarter inch clearance, quarter inch for the frame, about 16th of an inch for the bearing here, then quarter, quarter, 0.2, quarter, about a 16th, and then of course the frame and clearance again. So I think the two and a quarter is gonna be the way that I wanna go, and that leaves me with a shaft distance, which is the distance from the outside of the thrust to the other side of the thrust bearing, that leaves me with 1.125 or 1.25 inches total length, but I do plan on recessing this inside, pocketing it inside the frame just a little bit, so this might end up being just a little bit longer. So that's how I reach that calculations. This is the exact same thing I did for crippling depression. I just look at the distance from the floor to the top of the wheel and what all needs to fit inside that gap. I think the final thing that I wanted to cover very quickly for this video is the difference between a live shaft and a dead shaft. This design will be using a dead shaft. A dead shaft simply means that the shaft itself is not spinning, it is dead, it is immovable, it is stationary. So because this shaft is going to be clamped basically between the top and bottom pieces like that, it's going to be completely stationary and this whole weapon assembly moves around it on the outside. So the only thing that's live is the actual weapon assembly. The shaft is a dead shaft. In a live shaft circumstance, the shaft itself would be spinning. This is the shaft from Crippling Depression and the whole thing attaches to the weapon and the whole shaft and the whole assembly spins. This is actually the same way that it works in Anxiety Attack and Sergeant Cuddles where the whole system moves. So this is a little bit different in that the shaft will be stationary. All right, everyone, that is all I have for this video. Uh, next step is I think I'm going to laser cut these out of um, wood, just like what I did the weapon. So I can cut those, put a hole in it, put the weapon on, do that, and actually have something like that. Then I can mount the weapon in the back, and then I can start working on belt choices. I still really haven't decided what I want to do for belts. I've got a couple examples here that I might want to try, but once I get the top and bottom plate, just a rough template of them made, I can actually start mounting the weapon, mounting the um, motor, testing out some tensioning options, and I can start going forward to getting the weapon spinning. Then once that's done, I can work on the back half of the robot, get that all figured out, see how the drive system is going to work, and then start designing parts and making it and hopefully start testing it out. So uh, next step is going to be probably putting together a rough mock-up of the frame and get this spinning inside the frame. So see you then. As always, check out Facebook for updates and all that. And there's a bunch of links down in the description. Go ahead and look at those and click on them. See you next time. Thanks for watching.